<laughs> uh, if you have the MMR, you can use this toolkit, uh, uh, Pet RD Tools, okay? And that, and you can use a particular uh, executable called NM Extract, and that can help you convert your uh, raw pet data into uh, the interfile format that, Stir can, uh, that Surf can read. So that's, and then we remember we did our, our LM to Sino, our list mode to Sinograms uh, conversion. So you would use this prior to that. And similarly, if you have um, your uh, MR raw data, so the dot IMAs or your dot uh, DATs or whatever like that, so that's your raw MR data, you can run that through Siemens to ISM RMRD, and that will get you into the dot H5 format that you were using during uh, Johannes' uh, notebooks. Okay? And then the last one that I wanted to share with you is um, where our surf exercises are located, because a lot of you, if you're using the online um, version, are using them, but don't know where you'd be able to find them if you wanted to come back to them later. And so this is the website. It's at github.com, uh, CCP Petamar, surf exercises. And, and it has all the same structure that, you, that you're familiar with now for the, for the MR, the pet, and all the rest of it. Okay? All right, let's get into the last one, which is entitled... Uh, map EM. And so Chris mentioned this one during his presentation. Uh, and yeah, so we'll stop at 10 to, which gives us 20 minutes. Five we'll stop at 5 to. Go ahead. Yeah, Ash and Casper, I don't know if they told you, they, they ran from a, from a hotel to Wales the other day. Yep. Which sounds very impressive. It turns out it's only a seven kilometer loop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you've got um, expectation maximization. That's what the, uh, the, 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 uh, the ideas that we've been using so far to, to uh, optimize, to reconstruct our data. Uh, and then we've been using sort of MLEM if we're just using one subset of the data, if we're using the whole data in one go. We've got OSCM if we're using um, uh, subsets of that data. And then we've got the uh, maximum of posteriori. And that's, you know, the sort of the, the one step late ideas. And so for this, it's conceptually is actually very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to do a normal OSCM update. And then we're going to get the image out from that, and we're just going to update it uh, uh, as a function of our, our prior. Okay? And in this one, um, it's a quadratic prior. Chris mentioned that you could do quadratic, you could do total variation. Uh, this one is, is quadratic, but we'll see tomorrow that we could, you could uh, take this code, and with very few changes, you would have it available for an anatomical prior. You could even have it there for multiple anatomical priors. Okay? So this sort of code is, is the basis of that. Um, do all of our normal imports. I don't know if I skipped over anything that was important at the top. Yep. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, again, the same functions for showing images, for making images positive, and for adding in cylindrical field of views. Seed into our normal repository, uh, copy in our new working folder, and open up our emission image. This is all looking the same as, as normal. Create uh, an acquisition model based on our template sinogram, and then for project our image that we get some, uh, some simulated uh, acquisition data. Great. Uh, again, this all looks very familiar to you. Create uh, an objective function based on the, uh, uh, the Poisson log likelihood and uh, set the acquisition model. Create a reconstructor. Yeah, I'm just skipping over this because I think you've seen it four or five times by now, so hopefully it's starting to, to sink in how we do our reconstructions. Uh, set the objective function. Here, we're just setting one subset. So we're using all of our data, and we're going to run it for uh, 10 sub-iterations. Make an initial estimate, which will probably be um, just a uniform copy. And then we'll add in 
um, make it give it that cylindrical view that we've seen a couple of times. Set up a reconstructor, and now we're good to go. So, So, so uh, I explained this earlier using the two, the two keywords uh, iteration and sub iteration, and, and and in this case, an iteration is equal to an epoch. And what I mean by that is, if I have four sub iterations, an epoch, also known as a, as a full iteration, would be every four sub iterations. So what I mean is, uh, if I set four sub iterations, then I'll do four updates. Yeah. You can imagine a for loop where it will cycle through, and every four it will use a, a, a quarter of the data. You with me? And, and so an, an iteration or an epoch would be the time it takes me to use all of that data. So if I have 21 subsets, an epoch is every 21 um, updates, 21 sub iterations. So in this case, uh, an, an iteration and an epoch are exactly equivalent, and a sub iteration is, the, is a fraction of that data. Sure. Okay. In this case, we happen to just be using one subset, so uh, an epoch is equal to an iteration is equal to a sub iteration. Makes it easier. Yes. And we call them sub iterations. That doesn't mean that in other software, other reconstruction packages, they call it the same. Is that correct, Chris? You, you pick your your nomenclature and you go with it. OK, so here you can see that um, we create our, our weights. And our weights are saying that um, your voxel will depend on the two voxels that are on either side of you. And in here, we're just doing that in one dimension. Yeah, so I'm just going from one voxel greater in some dimension, one voxel less in some dimension. You could equally do it as a 3 by 3 cube. But here, for simplicity, we're just doing it as a, as a 1 by 1 by 3. Yeah? And then I've, I've normal, we've normalized it so that the sum is equal to 1. And so the only two uh, formulae that you need to familiarize yourself with for this uh, MAPEM approach are given here. So as I said, we'll do our normal OSCM update. And then on top of that, we'll do uh, an image uh, regularization step. So we c uh, compute our regularization image. Uh, as such, so this is for, for one voxel in that regularization image. So we'll loop over all of the voxels in our regularization image to calculate our, the, the entirety of that, that image. And that's a, a pretty simple formula. And then, our, so once we've run our OSCM updates and we've calculated our regularization image above, we're going to get a, a new updated image which is dependent on three. Uh, variables. It's going to depend on the, the image that came out from OSCM. It's going to depend on the regularization image that we just calculated in this step above. And it's also going to depend on, on, on that beta term that's, that's in the formula there. And so, um, as you would expect, when your beta value comes down to zero, this step, uh, your x nu just equals your x EM, your expectation maximization image i.e. equals the image that came out from your OSCM. Okay, so as, I mean, as you're aware already, as you increase your beta value in, in your prior, you're more or less influenced by that, that, um, that regularization, which in this case happens to be the, uh, the quadratic prior. All right? So you can, uh, if you have a quick look at the, the code, you can probably convince yourself that, that this all makes sense. So I said that um, this will just be for, for that jth um, voxel. So I'm going to have to loop over all of them. So I'm doing 4 all over z, 4 all over y, 4 all over all my x voxels. And then I'm going to do from, uh, uh, from my dx equals minus 1 to my plus 1. Why am I doing that? Well, because if you look just above, I said that my weights are some one-dimensional uh, weights. So if I had, a, for example, if I was doing a cube 
that was three by three by three, then I would probably have to have two more four loops in this step. I'd probably have to go four dz equals minus one to plus one, four dy equals minus one to plus one, and four dx equals minus one to plus one. In this case, we're doing a simplification, so we only need to do the for loop across the, that x direction. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I'm going to loop over each of my voxels in, in, in my image, and for each of my voxels, I need to compute three values, and, and I'm just going to sum them, and that will give me this, uh, this image. Nice and straightforward. And then, again, I mean, this is, this is just word for word what's going on in here. You can have a quick look and, and convince yourself that that's true. There's a little square root. Here's the beta values, beta and beta. So if these were all equal to, to zero, then these would all cancel out. You'd end up with a two on top, canceling out with the one plus one on the bottom, and you'd end up with your EM image. All right. Uh, we're using this function called uh, time. It's a useful thing if you're working in Python, if you want to time any of your reconstructions. Yeah. <laughs> Just import it for fun. I'm actually not going to do that because I don't need to. It's in theory how you would use it if you wanted to. All right. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. We don't use it. Okay, uh, so this is just a, this is some method that's just going to do some im showing so that we can see how our, our, our image just got better as we went through our, our uh, optimization. And then here you can see this is this is what I was talking about. And so um, our first step is going to be to compute our regularization regularization image, and that's based on the image from sort of the previous iteration. And then I'm going to update it. And so this is my OSCM normal update. So we, when we looked at our deconstructed uh, OSCM earlier, that's what this is. And then I'm going to do, use that compute map EM uh, function that was defined just a little bit earlier, where it was sort of the quadratic, um, the, sort of the 2EM over the, the quadratic uh, expression. And, and that's it. So just in adding in those two extra lines of code, we've uh, uh, changed, modified our, our OSCM so that it's now MAPM. Yeah? Give that a run. Run it for however many iterations. Display it. <laughs> And it looks good. <laughs> we can all pat ourselves on the back and go home. I don't know what's going on there. The point, the point about, about these exercises, you take the sensor, you implement it, and you find out that the algorithm is not correct. Ah. Did I skip over? Yeah. So I think there might be some division by zero. Yeah. We need maybe add some epsilon on the. Yeah. <laughs> You can have a look at the warnings that it writes above that. Yeah, I'll give you a quick line by the You have to send an email to the office and say, So, what do you need to do to fix this? It's better. He suggested a smaller, better value. Smaller beta would obviously solve it because if we went to the case where it's zero, then, then we're back to EM and so we wouldn't have a division by zero. In reality, what you could do is you could add a very small epsilon in here, right? Yeah, so I, yeah, I added here 0.001. Yeah. So what, what we're doing now is trying to fix an algorithm that we really, now we've lost probably all convergence results that are in the paper by doing a post modification. But it's And so now we don't have that error that I <laughs> skipped over earlier when it was complaining about a division by zero. There's more errors, though, on ours. On yours? On everyone else's. There's quite a lot. 
quite a few more errands. Oh, wow. Maybe five, four. Uh, Need to update to a Mac. Uh, so what's, what's the error? <laughs> if you put a small increment on there, the what's that? Sorry? Oh, yeah, it's just a few error things. But, um, yeah. Did you put in the... Um, no, I haven't actually put in the... The epsilon. Uh, if, you, if you go right up to the... Oh, to the very top. This one, if you whack it in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, nice. Yeah, cool. Just inside you the bracket there. Mm -hmm. On uh, right. The yeah. yeah. So, so you, you add in a, in a beta value and you, uh, in a small epsilon value and you still end up with errors? Uh, Harry? No. No? So nobody's got errors and everybody's got beautiful images? Perfect. <coughs> really blurry. Yeah, I mean, we're only running it here for 16. You could uh, run it for a little bit longer if you'd like. Yeah, with huh? <laughs> Can I be telling somebody off? <laughs> <laughs> And so if you uh, run it for a little bit longer. Hopefully we should see that the images look a little bit nicer. Yeah? But you should probably now find, I mean, the question is now, how does this algorithm do for a very small regularization or a very big one? Yeah. So if, if you remember when, when I was presenting Nikos the slides, one step late, works well if you're close to the solution. And that sort of implies if you have a very small penalty, you are going to be close to, a, to the US solution and that algorithm will work. Right there. And it will be about as fast as, uh, as OSCM would be. This algorithm takes an increment with some square root stuff and whatever. Uh, and as, if you add to a small increment there, that will never divide by zero anymore, so the problem will disappear, and you can put in a very large beta, and it will always converge, except it might take the age of the universe to converge. <laughs> so a very large penalty will actually slow you down dramatically in this particular algorithm. If you would use a slightly smarter algorithm that knows about gradients and so on, then that wouldn't happen. This is a very easy algorithm to implement, but that doesn't mean it's going to be very fast. Yeah. You can potentially mess around with different beta values here, and if you want different number of uh, iterations to see what your convergence looks like. You could even, if you wanted to, uh, stick in the, uh, the number of subsets to make everything a little bit quicker so that you can then increase your number of sub-iterations and get to, a, get to a solution a little bit quicker. So if you, if you then go back to the paper, um, again in, in the talk, and, and Richard repeated it over here, he said we, we, we're just going to constant, use constant weights. In the paper that's described by the one and, and she paper, they say, no, no, if you, if you use weights which depend on your current image, that's you, what you're uh, effectively going to do as opposed to a quadratic prior, you can then change that into other files that you want and make it more edge preserving and so on. So that you have this implementation, you implement that one formula from the paper, and then you will be doing edge preserving regularization. But as it is, it's just quadratic. So that's new set. So you can mess around with different numbers of subsets and see what that does for you. And I suppose we didn't mention it, but it, it should, shouldn't really come as a surprise if you use four subsets using a quarter of the data, so you're looking at getting about four times faster. All right, should we leave it there? Any questions?
Anything that we could clarify? Everything crystal clear? Perfect. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> you have uh, like regularizers available in the toolkit. Like so we've got um, we've got a couple of uh, prior classes. For example, mm -hmm. there's a paper by Daniel Bader, uh, which is for the HKEM, which is a hybrid kernel uh, method for for regularization. Mm -hmm. There's also the parallel level sets. Prior, which was by Ed Hart, yeah, and, and so, so that's in STIR and also in SURF. And then tomorrow we'll use some of the CIL library, and they have a lot more regularizers as well. So when you start interfacing with, you know, using some of SURF and some of CIL, you have a whole host of uh, algorithms and regularizers which become available to you.